company that tells how much, whether you've done better, made profit, made money today, this week, this month, this year. Is your business operations making money for you, for your shareholders? How is that process going? That's what the income statement is about. Not how big your company is, how much money you have, whatever. It's whether and how much you've made over the last month or the last year or the last quarter. Okay. It is that period view you're looking at as you go forward. Essentially, it's the revenue. And then it's the, the items that are underneath that. Revenue, again, we've talked about this before. Total amount of money that you receive from being in your business. So you might be getting rents. You may have an office that has, that sells your, the, um, it could very well be that the florist that we we're talking about in the prior um, discussion has her floral business, but she also owns the building. And there's another, there's an operation in the back that she rents out to an account, accountant. So there's some revenue that comes in from that. That would be, if it's the same inst, same um, business, that would be revenue to the business. If it's all operated the same, although it would not necessarily be called sales, as I said before, uh, because it's not really the selling the flowers and the florists. So it's all the things that come from the business activities. We'll simplify it and not make it complex like that. And from here on out, we'll just talk about the flower business, if you will, as the example that we were using. Total dollar amount, um, things that come in, um, all the, uh, it's essentially what one has to work with as you're building up your business and you're trying to pay all your bills and you're trying to have money in your pocket when it's time to go home. Cost of goods sold, or what's called COGS, sometimes called cost of sales. People make the mistake of thinking cost of sales is your selling expense. It's not. Cost of sales, as sometimes people think, is your you know marketing and sales expense. It is not. Cost of goods sold, which is why they say that instead of cost of sales, Cost of goods sold is what it costs to put that pair of pants, as I was saying, or put those flowers into the vase. This little flower shop cannot sell flowers for the wedding unless it has flowers put into the vase. And therefore, the flowers are costs of goods sold, as is the vase. So basically, that's what you are giving someone. They get the cost of goods sold, and the revenue they pay gives you some gross profit right? That's the, um, the way to be thinking about it. But the way it's actually calculated when you, when you get down to the details and when you really think about it, all the numbers have to match, right? So when you look at all the numbers you have, you have the flowers and all the other things that are on inventory. And now you're selling off some of your inventory. So the cost of goods that you're doing is you're taking your total inventory and the amount that you reduce inventory that is the beginning inventory minus the ending inventory, the amount you reduce the inventory is what your cost of goods sold are. So if you think about it, even though it's the flowers in the vase, you're looking at it in terms of what this business looks like, how many flowers you have total at the beginning, how many you've, you've reduced by selling the flowers for the wedding. And then if you've added any additional ones, that would have, a, that would have an effect on how you would account for your, um, your business because you have the adding the inventory would show up as well on, on your balance sheet. So you make sure that even though you're thinking it, it nets out to be the same thing, basically, that when you're selling this vase full of flowers, the cost of the flowers or the cost of the, the inventory that you've taken off the shelf, that is the cost of goods for that transaction. But when you're looking at a period of time over the entire day, you say, I started with some flowers this morning. I got a delivery of flowers later in the afternoon and I sold these, these flowers. So my cost of goods sold for the day is equal to the beginning inventory in the morning plus the ones that I got during the day minus the ones, the inventory that I have at the end of the day. So what's different there is what went out the door as part of my revenue generation for the day. So that's how cost of goods sold work. It has to do with thinking about the entire period of time, not simply one purchase.
But the net of it is, if there's only one customer in the store and you make one purchase and you look at the beginning inventory at the time before that purchase and after that purchase, the difference is the cost of those flowers that went out the door when you made, the, when you made that sale. That's the cost of goods sold. So it translates into a physical operating thing of putting those things into the vase and giving them away, but it also looks at what the accounts are in the books. And that's, uh, that's how you keep everything on track and everything um, exactly as, or, or you know what's going on in your business, as, as does everyone else. As I said, or we talked about gross income, gross profit, that's what, you, when you take the revenue minus your cost of goods sold, All right? What after you have the gross profit, you still have to pay your employees, you have to pay your rent, you have to pay your utilities. Those are called expenses. So the cost of goods sold, often called costs, the expenses are the things that are going called they also called operating expenses. I said there's different names for everything. They're the things that are not part of the actual product you sold. They're not anywhere in inventory, but rather they are the the costs of running your business. Okay, that's what we mean by expenses or operating expenses. Some of the different expense accounts you might have are selling, general, administrative, administrative, or things like um, paying the account, paying for utilities, um, paying for your telecommunications charges, that sort of thing. Uh, having the, someone that's there, a clerk at the door or whatever, answering questions, uh, answering the phones. I may have a call service, those kinds of things. Um, research that's selling in a general administrative. Notice selling is not the same as cost of goods sold, as I said. Cost of goods sold relates to what is going out the door and being sold. Selling is in anticipation of future sales. That is not accounted for as a cost of goods sold. It's accounted for as an expense because it, it's for the future. It's being expended now, but not for the revenue that you've already gotten for the future right research and development things that you might be trying to develop new things or come up with you have some people that are working that are coming up with new ways to uh, new design ideas for the floral arrangements and the like you may have them in the back and they're they're working on doing that kind of activity they're not really selling they're trying to come up with new approaches so that would be a research and development usually in technology businesses or something you have people developing new products or services and then, of course, interest expense. This is not, not interest on long-term debt, but you might have interest expenses that are associated with, with just doing business as you're, as you're working through um, that, that sort of uh, the operation associated with, with uh, short-term uh, interest and in purchases and the like. Um, selling administration, selling general administration includes depreciation. Depreciation, although we think of it in physical sense, it's what happens to a car when you drive it off the lot. You got to flip it around and say, what does it mean to my pieces of paper that have all these numbers written on it, right? The accounting accounts. Depreciation really is a way to say, I'm buying this truck. Say it's a delivery truck for our floral shop. I'm buying this truck, but I'm going to be able to use it for three years. So I take some of the cost of the truck and apply that to my business expenses for year one. I take some of it for year two. I take some of it for year three. And so depreciation is really a way to put your, put your expenses over the period of time where you're expending the value that you created. Unfortunately, from a cash perspective, you buy the truck up front, right? But when you account, so all that cash goes out the door, which is why you could be cash negative. But you're, you're looking for or you're accounting for that purchase of the truck over a period of time using this depreciation model. What you're trying to do is say, it's not fair to my current income statement to say that I lost money this year because I bought three trucks because I'm growing like crazy. But it looks like I lost money from a cash perspective. But what I'm really doing is investing for the next three or four years. And so depreciation allows you to show that by including those costs into the future. Okay. There are ways that this 
that you, this is corrected for in high capital business terms that I didn't mention uh, that people also use are EBITDA, which is earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization, which means that you correct for this idea that you defer some of the cost into future accounting periods and instead show the cost right up front. And in that particular case, you do have, um, or let me just put it this way, you don't, you don't show costs that you're now actually occurring from a cash perspective. And so therefore, if you've expended capital like trucks or you put a lot of equipment in years past, the cash flow of your business looks much better, is actually better than the, uh, than the expense, the earnings number, because you're, a lot of the uh, expenses that you're recognizing are non-cash expenses. I don't think that I explained that very clearly, but it's just another term that is floating around that you can drill down on and understand to understand why what people are talking about when they talk about profitability measures. At the bottom of this whole list is net income. That's after you pay interest. That's after you pay your government. Um, that is the taxes. And so net income is really the profit that is available for investors uh, to get. It stays in the business unless it's dividended out or unless you're in a, a small business structure that allows the owner to just take advantage of the net income um, on, their, on their normal income tax basis. Right? Net, net income is the profit and it can be given out to owners by dividend. Okay, But it's, it's profit that the company has, uh, has gathered and accepted over time. So those are the income statement thoughts records the revenue and expenses. Gross profit is what, what you have to run your business operations. In other words, your pricing is more than your cost, cost of goods sold. Therefore, you have excess gross profit, which you can hire people and pay rents and things. You pay your rent at the end of that is where you get to your net income. And what's left is this idea of retained earnings that your, your net income gets converted into retained earnings on your balance sheet which is what we'll talk about next. And that's what keeps your accounting uh, equation in balance. Your net income goes over and gets put into retained earnings on your balance sheet. And that's what's called closing out your financial statements for that time period. Now you've taken a snapshot of the business. It includes the profit or loss from the operations in the preceding period of time. And then you build your balance sheet and you close out your financials, okay? All right, next we'll talk about the balance sheet. Before that, are there any questions about the income statement?